Hopefully you guys are hearing me. I do believe so. <laughs> All right, another official good morning to everybody. <laughs> another official good morning to everybody. Uh, it is Monday morning. God bless each and every one of you. I hope that you are well in good health. And I was just saying previously two weeks again uh, to the month of August. And I know it's back out to school in two weeks. So enjoy the time with your families. Uh, you know, the benefit of it. Uh, you know, take all that you can get because, you know, things get back pretty busy in September, back out to, to school and teachers and, you know, the road gets very busy and, you know, the, the cities get very congested and the track, nobody is looking forward to it, right? So enjoy the rest of your weeks home with your family. God bless you. This is Monday morning. Welcome to those of you from our First Church family and by to extension to everybody else whose family um, the family of God. So God bless each and every one of you. Not going to be on long this morning because I am doing a, a basketball camp in Enterprise Chagornas, if you're, if you know Trinidad and Tobago, um, and we're having great fun with the young people out there. We're doing some great work. I want to, um, uh, commend one of my sisters, you know, in the faith, I know she's traveling and she's abroad right now. But Roz, Rosalind, who's usually on devotions every morning, you know, uh, integrated me and said, hey, look, let's do some work in the community. She's always doing it with the young people, uh, with the basketball teams. And she says, look, you know, um, let's do some work out there. And I've been having fun. This is my second week um, with them. And uh, the camp will uh, be completed. I believe it will come to an end this week. So we have two, one more week with them and we've been really impacting them, you know, uh, with the truth. And so God bless you, Roz, and continue to do the great work that you're doing. An incredible, incredible, valuable person in the body of Christ. So we want to get right into the word this morning. And we want to pray and ask God to bless his word. And then we're going to pray and, and, and I'll release you to go out and to continue to do great things. Father, I thank you for your goodness and your mercies. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you that you do not fail us. You're, 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 you're so true to your word. I thank you, O oh God, for your blessings over our life. I thank you for our families. I thank you for good health. I thank you, O oh God, that your word is true. If there be anybody who is sick in the body and they're listening to me, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll give them strength, that you'll give them health, that that body will align itself with the word of God. Help them to believe, to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Thank you, O oh God, Father, for your faithfulness to your word. We continue to trust and rely on you. We want to finish well in this life. We want to pour out in the earth what you have placed inside of us. We want to live in, in righteously, oh God, to honor you. We want to reflect you in the earth. We want to be the church where the gates of hell cannot prevail against what you have built. We want to represent you in everything that we do. Our love must stand out for others. So thank you, Lord, for your covering and protection. Your goodness, your mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to share something with you very quickly. And um, it is, I shared a little bit of it yesterday, and um, I just want to share with you. I, I, I spoke on um, um, a topic in the past, and many young people had gotten saved, and some followed through to baptism, but I spoke on the spirit of Athaliah, the spirit of Athaliah. And just to give you a quick context, uh, Athaliah was one of the only queens or women to sit on the throne of Israel. And how did that happen? Um, 
First Kings chapter 22. First Kings chapter 22. Um, Let me just give you the right scripture here. Take a look at my notes. All right, we're gonna take we're gonna take it from Second Chronicles twenty-two. Let's take it from Second Chronicles twenty-two and verse number eight. All right, 2 Chronicles 22 and verse number 8. If you have your Bibles, you can check it out, 2 Chronicles 22 and 8. And I'm going to read from there just to give you um, context, right? How Athaliah came into leadership. Um, it says, while Jehu was executing... Judgment on the house of Ahab. He found the officials of Judah and the sons of Ahaziah's relatives who had been attending Ahaziah, and he killed them. He then went in search of Ahaziah and his men and captured him while he was hiding in Samaria. He was brought to Jehu and put to death. They buried him, for they said he was the son of Jehoshaphat who sought the Lord with all his heart. So there was no one in the house of Ahaziah powerful enough to retain the kingdom. When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she proceeded to destroy the whole royal family of the house of Judah. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of the king Jehoram, took Joash, son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the royal princes who were about to be murdered and put him and his nurse in a bedroom. Because Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Jehoram and the wife of priest Jehoadiah was Ahaziah's sister, she hid the child from Athaliah so she could not kill him. He remained hidden with them at the temple of God for six years while Athaliah ruled the land. Many of you will know that Joash became king at a very tender age. Here's what I want to share with you this morning. And we don't have a lot of time, but here's what I want to share with you. The generation to come must be protected by this generation. There are spirits, there are rulers of darkness, there is spiritual wickedness, there are forces within the world that seeks to destroy an entire house. You will see that when they were hunting the leadership, the Bible says, so there was no one in the house of Ahaziah powerful enough to retain the kingdom. One of the focuses of the devil is to weaken the nations. Lucifer, the one that weakens the nations. So one of the things that you have to understand is that the devil has a goal to weaken your household so that sometime in the future, what he wants you to know is that there is no one powerful enough to retain what you have built. A nation is weakened if there is no one powerful enough to retain its kingdom. A family is weakened if in the future there is no one powerful enough to lead it. A business is weakened in the future if there is no one powerful enough to retain the kingdom. And so the enemy has a focus. The Bible says he seeks to steal, to kill and to destroy. It is not good to just bask in the goodness of God, to testify of his promises, and you're not living with wisdom, cognizant that we also live around an enemy who seeks walking around or roaming around like a roaring lion, 
seeking who he may devour. It will be um, um, it, it will be that we are not uh, spiritually aware. We are walking, we are walking around and wandering, talking about our goodness of God, but we are not conscious or cognizant of the fact that there is an enemy that is also roaming, seeking to destroy us. And can I say this? The devil never applies for vacation. The devil never asks for two weeks off. The devil never asks God, hey, I'll be taking a break. You go ahead and bless your people. Pour out from the windows of heaven blessings that they cannot contain. I'll be back. I need to take a break. I need to take a rest. So I'm going to click the switch off for every spiritual wickedness and demonic power that works in, com in collaboration with me. We're going to take a vacation. Can I tell you this? The devil does not take a break. And that's why you got to keep praying in season and out of season. Why are you taking a break on your prayer? Why are you taking a break on your fasting? Why are you taking a break on you calling upon the name of the Lord? There are no times for holidays when it comes to our faith. We cannot take breaks. We got to be in season and out of season, applying ourselves to the things of God. Jesus says, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. When they said, Master, some people are here to see you last night. They were very impressed with the healing service you did. He says, listen, we've got to get to the next city. For this purpose was I sent to preach the gospel. We don't have time to take selfies. We don't have time to autograph books right now. We don't have time to just talk about where I was. We only have time to be where I have not been. We've got to get this gospel of light into these communities of darkness. That's why I was sent. So I want you to understand something here from the scripture. That spirit, not Athaliah, but the spirit of Athaliah, she decided to kill every potential seed that could have ruled in the house. And I want you to know it is no different today. The enemy wants you to serve God, but for your children not to serve God. The enemy wants you to serve God, but for your husband not to serve God. The enemy wants you to serve God, but for your wife not to serve God. Why? He wants to break the flow of faith. The apostle Paul told Timothy, I saw a faith in your grandmother, Lois. I saw a faith in your mother, Eunice. And he said, I bear witness that this same faith is in you. Faith must flow from generation to generation. And he is saying he also understood that things are activated in your life by the laying of hands of the elders. When the elders laid their hands on you, I know that there was a gift place or part, uh, 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 a gift that was sent or, or handed over to you or imparted onto you. And I want you to stir up that gift that came by the laying of hands. So from generation to generation, when we put our hands on the next generation, something is imparted. So there's a flow of faith, but the enemy wants to break the flow. I submit to you this morning that the flow of faith from generation to generation in your house will not be broken in Jesus' name. The Bible says, watch this, and I want you to pay attention. While the enemy plots, God plans. I want you to write that down in your notes this morning. While the enemy plots, God plans. He is plotting against you, but God is planning for you. Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for you to do what? prosper plans that will not bring you harm but plans that will give you hope for what an expected end so while Athaliah the mother of Isaiah saw that her son was dead she proceeded to do what destroy that word destroy stands out to me because I know that's what the devil wants to do to steal to kill and to destroy. She proceeded to destroy what? The whole royal family 
out of the house of Judah. The devil is against families being of God. The devil is against your testimony when you can say, as for me and my house, we serve the Lord. He doesn't want you to have that testimony. He wants you to be quiet when you have to talk about your son or talk about your husband or talk about your sister or talk about your brother. I serve God, but she's struggling. I serve God, but she's in the world. I serve God, but she's still out there. I serve God, but he is doing this. I serve God, but he is doing this. I serve God, but they are doing this. The devil does not want the household to have a testimony, but I declare to you this morning, you shall see as for me and my house. We are, not we will, we are serving the Lord. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Jehoram, took Joash. Now, I want to say three things. I said I'm not going to be here long, but I want to say three things. I pray for the spirit of Jehoshaphat in the land. Why? Jehoshaphat had wisdom. You, when you are an intercessor, God will give you what? Wisdom. Here's what you got to do. You got to steal away the next generation and put them in a secret place. You say, well, even my dog agrees with me outside the door. You got to steal the generation away. What do you mean? When the enemy comes to snatch them out, you will snatch them out of the jaws of death. Snatch them out of the jaws of darkness. Snatch them out of the jaws of the enemy and the wilderness. Snatch them out of the jaws of the things that will take them down. Because the Bible says this sin, it wages uh, and it, those wages lead to death. But you got to snatch them out of the jaws of the enemy. Snatch them out of the jaws of distraction. Snatch them out of these wrong relationships. Snatch them out of these wrong paths, whatever they're pursuing. Snatch them out in Jesus' name. You got to be moving with wisdom. You got to move, move with boldness right now. I told you last week when I was in our power, I had a dream of a young man and I called him up. And when I called him up, I said, I dreamt you. You were struggling in a pool and you were having difficulty. And I said to my wife, hold my son Judah because we have to, I have to jump down to save this young man. What do you think happened? His mother sent me a message seven days later saying, he had an accident in a pool. The same thing I dreamt. His face bruised from the forehead coming straight down to the chin. Same thing I dreamt. You got to position yourself as an intercessor to pick up these things in the realm and snatch them out of the jaws of the enemy. Tell you, my mother is not here physically again, but I can tell you she has snatched me out of a lot of situations. Snatched me. Stood in her room, got on her knees. And if her, her hands were short, she knew that God's hands was not short. But his hands could reach wherever I was. If I was down in Australia, I was in the UK, I was in the US. If I was traveling in the Caribbean islands and she knew I had to preach, she knew that her hands were short. But God's hands could have reached me. And whatever enemy meant for evil, God, she knew, can turn it around for good. You got to pray and snatch them out of the way of the enemy. Spirit of Athaliah, you will not have my children. Spirit of Athaliah, you will not have my husband. Spirit of Athaliah, you will not have my wife. Spirit of Athaliah, you will not have my home. Jehoshaphat, she snatched out Joash. Now the Bible says, she put him in a secret place. Can I say this to you? One of the most powerful things that you can do for your children is teach them the secret place of the Most High. What are you going to do? You're going to teach them what? The secret place of the Most High. Where they can abide in the shadows. Don't make me run this morning. It's Monday. Don't get me fired up this morning. It's Monday. This is not Sunday. If you want them to hide, teach them to hide in the shadows of the Almighty. Where are you this morning? I want you to understand you are like a spiritual coach this morning. You got to learn to teach your generation how to hide where? In the shadows of the Almighty. Teach them to worship. Teach them to pray in tongues. Teach them to walk around their room and plead the blood of the Lamb. 
Teach them how to search the scriptures and to find a promise. Teach them how to get familiar with what? The secret place. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm going to teach you how to, how to access the secret place. But can I say this? You can't teach them where you have not been. You got to learn the secret place yourself. I got a word that the Lord is preparing me. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't leak it out right now. It is not the time, but I got, I got a message that the Lord is teaching me that we got to get back to the place of soaking. We, we getting up too quick. We're getting up too quick. We're just praying for answers and we're leaving. We, we have lost the art of nesting inside of him. Come on. The Bible says a swallow has found her house. The sparrow her nest. But even your altars, oh God. So we, we got to house and nest in, at the altars. It's not a drive-through type of thing anymore. It's an overnight cook crock pot type of spending time so that the juices of the presence of the Lord can get into me so that my thoughts are changed and transformed in the presence and there are things inside of me that couldn't be broken. But because I spent time and I started to soak in the Lord, these things started to change and, and transform. It's a holding on to him and say, I will not let you go until you bless me. And I'm a wage war tonight. The Bible says you, 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 you fought or you wrestled against God. Triumph. Where is your, where is your secret place experience right now? Uh, what type of secret place experience are you having? Or does the secret place not even see when it comes to the need? The second thing she did is not just put him in a secret place. She nursed him. Hey, can I tell you this? Your children might have grown up, but you are still feeding them. And what you are feeding them are prophetic truths because one of the things that you have to be able to do is to feed a child into their future. I'm not talking about the food that you put on their plate. I'm talking about the food you put in their spirit. You got to sell the God destiny to them. You got to keep selling them on the direction of the will of God. You got to keep putting into their bottles the prophetic truths that God has told you about their future so that they will not feed and eat anywhere else. Jesus, the Lord told uh, uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I want you to eat only what I give you. And when he showed him the scroll, he told him, eat the scroll. What is the scroll? The scroll was a picture and the scroll was words. I want you to consume where I am carrying you. I'm going to feed you in a certain way. Don't eat from everybody else. Don't eat from this source. Don't eat from that leader. Don't eat from society. Don't eat from this, 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 this leader. I want you to eat only what I am giving you. Why? Because your destiny requires you to eat in a certain way. Ah, uh, I hope some of you are getting it this morning. Your destiny requires a certain diet. Holy Spirit just gave me that. Your destiny requires a certain diet. When, when Elijah was depressed and, 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 and he was sat under a juniper tree and the Lord said, manna from above through a bird. When he ate the first time, God says, eat again. Why? Because God knew how far the next mountain top was. And the Bible says, God said to him, you will go in the strength of this meat for the next, what, 40 days. If you don't eat right, you can't walk right. If you don't eat enough, you won't walk enough. 
If you don't have the right diet, you won't hit the right destiny. So God is saying, you've got to eat a double portion now because I know where I'm taking you and you're going to need this meat today so that you have strength for the next 40 days till you get to the next mountain. Come on, somebody. If you're going to introduce them to the secret place, you've got to feed them right. But the Bible says it took some years. I don't have time to finish this. But some of you are not being patient for the growth of your children. Oh, you're not going to feed them and they're going to become big boys and big girls overnight. It's going to take some years of molding before their time has come. Joash's time. He was alive, but his time did not come immediately. He was alive, but it took about seven to nine years for his time to come, for the crown to be put on his head. And some of you have not held to being aggressively patient for the growth of your children. And I pray that God will give you divine patience this morning. For you to not just pray today, but to keep praying. For you to not just mold today, but to keep for you to not just correct today, but to keep correcting. For you to just not love today, but to keep loving. For you to not just celebrate today, but to keep celebrating. I pray that you will have patience. Because in the secret place, you got to feed them in a certain way. But you got to wait. Wait, I say. Growth takes time. Growth doesn't happen immediately, but growth happens ultimately until their time has come. The Bible says when they discover Joash, somebody says, the house is not totally destroyed. For there is a seed who is alive, but there's a seed who is well fed. And there's a seed who has grown up. Come on, somebody. Not just grown up, but grown up. To the point that when his time has come, he is ready to take the throne. Are you there with me this morning? Put a seven in the chat if you're there with me. I got to go, I got to go, I got to go, I'm late. I got to go, are you there with me this morning? Put a seven in the chat. God is going to perfect it. God is going to complete it. God is going to bring it down to a, a, a finishing. God's going to bring you down to the last thing. Put a seven with me if you understand. If God has the power today to do it for you like he has never done it before. Hide them in the secret place. Feed them in the secret place. And wait. I say wait for their growth. For when their time has come, just like the vision, it will not disappoint. Uh -uh. It will not disappoint. It will not disappoint. It will not disappoint. But it shall surely do exactly what it was promised. Father, today, may the seed of the word of God be in the grafted word of God. Save our souls. We plant it in our spirits and our hearts. We know that you are more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask of it. Every care and concern, we put it at your feet right now. We do not carry it as a burden, but I pray in Jesus. We are the God of all things. We go out today to handle your business. He said, your son said, I must be about my father's business. And God, if we handle your business today, I give you permission to handle ours. Every door is open. Every need is met. Healing, breakthrough, deliverance, light, opportunities, removal of things that are standing in our way. We give you full permission to use your right hand and do what you got to do because we know all things work together for good for them that love you. All of you pray. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. I saw somebody going in for surgery. I want you to know that the great physician has handled it already. Fear not. Go in faith. Walk for the bodies aligned with the word of God. In no other name but in Jesus' name. Amen. And every other prayer request that I did not see. We continue to pray for you as a pastoral staff. But I want you to know God has your back. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord give you.
is perfect peace. May you go like Christ and do good everywhere that you go. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I wish I could hug you, tell you, turn to the person on your left hand, but find somebody in your house and hug them and tell them, God bless you real, real, real good. God bless you tomorrow. Have no fear. The Lord has you in his hands and he's in control. God bless you. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a blessed day.